Welcome to Northern Chemistry. Today we're going to be doing a revision video on group 2 metals with some exam questions at the end. So the properties of group 2 which are the alkaline earth metals. They all have two electrons in their outer shell, so in the S subshell, and the ionisation energy of group 2 metals decreases down the group because atomic radius and shielding increase which outweighs the increase in nuclear charge, decreasing the nuclear attraction to the outer electrons. Melting points decrease down the group because atomic radius and shielding increases, which decreases the strength of metallic bonding between the metal arms, so less energy is required to overcome the metallic bonding. Group 2 metals react in a redox reaction with water to form hydroxides and hydrogen. So for example, in this equation, magnesium reacts with two molecules of water, to form magnesium hydroxide, MgOH2, and hydrogen gas. And you can see from the oxidation numbers that magnesium goes from zero to plus two, and hydrogen goes from plus one to zero. So this is a redox reaction because both reduction, so of the hydrogen, and oxidation of the magnesium take place. The solubility of group two hydroxides increases down the group. So the pH of the group two hydroxides increases down the group because more it's more alkaline as more hydroxide ions are released for the same concentration. You can see in this table, down the group, solubility and pH of the hydroxides increases. And you can be asked in exam questions to estimate the pH of a group two hydroxide in water. And they'll often ask you to actually compare between two different hydroxides. So for example, Magnesium hydroxide is at the top of the group, so it's going to have a much lower pH, a less alkaline pH, closer to neutral. And barium hydroxide, much further down the group, is going to have a much higher pH because more hydroxide ions are released, so it's more alkaline. Barium hydroxide, you might expect to be 13 or 14 pH. And then the uses of group 2 hydroxides. So magnesium hydroxide, also known as milk of magnesia, is actually used to neutralize excess hydrochloric acid in the stomach, which helps to cure indigestion, and are also known as antacids. And then calcium hydroxide is used to neutralize acidic soils in agriculture. So we've got a question. Write an equation for and identify the oxidation numbers in the reaction which magnesium hydroxide neutralizes excess hydrochloric acid in the stomach. So magnesium hydroxide is going to react with HCl to form a salt, magnesium chloride, and it's also going to form water as it's a neutralization reaction. And then to balance, we need two molecules of HCl. And we also need two molecules of water. And then don't forget your state symbols. And then the oxidation numbers. So chlorine in HCl is going to be minus one and hydrogen is going to be plus one. And then magnesium is going to be plus two in magnesium hydroxide because oxygen is going to be minus two and hydrogen is going to be plus one. So that gives an overall of zero for both compounds. And then in magnesium chloride, Magnesium is going to stay as plus two and chlorine is going to stay as minus one. And then hydrogen in water is going to be plus one and oxygen is, as usual, minus two. So you can see that's not a redox reaction. So there's no change in oxidation numbers. Acidified barium nitrate is used to test for the presence of sulfate ions SO4 to minus. Barium sulfate, a white precipitate, forms, so BASO4. The solution is acidified to remove any carbonate ions, which would result in the formation of a white precipitate. So we've got a question. Write the ionic equation for the formation of barium sulfate precipitate in the sulfate test. In this ionic equation, we're forming barium sulfate from barium nitrate, which is made up of barium 2 plus and NO3 minus ions. We're reacting it with a sulfate, which has SO4 2 minus ions. So we need to identify all of our spectator ions and remove them. So you can see that NO3 minus is on both sides, so we can cancel them. And that leaves us with Ba2 plus plus SO4 2 minus forming barium sulfate, which is going to be a solid precipitate, and these are both aqueous ions. Okay, so we've got an exam question. This question is about reactions and uses of weak acids, methanoic acid and ethanoic acid. A student adds magnesium metal to an aqueous solution of ethanoic acid, CH3COH. A redox reaction takes place. Write the overall equation for this reaction and explain in terms of oxidation numbers which element has been oxidized and which element has been reduced. Magnesium is going to react with ethanoic acid to form a salt, which is going to be magnesium ethanoate. And magnesium ions have a charge of 2 plus, and ethanoate ions have a charge of 1 minus. So we're going to need two ethanoate ions for each magnesium ion. And we're going to form hydrogen. And to balance, we need two ethanoic acid molecules. So if we have a look at what could be changing oxidation number, magnesium is going from an element on its own to an ion. So it's going to be oxidized from zero in Mg to plus two in magnesium ethanoate. And then hydrogen has been reduced from plus one in ethanoic acid 
to zero in hydrogen. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out my periodicity revision video, which should be in the top right hand corner now. If you want to purchase my notes and flashcards, check out my website link in the description. Oh, <laughs> oh,